Hello and welcome to another AFCB TV preview show. I'm joined by Matchday commentator Chris Temple and we'll be going back over a busy few days in the Cherries camp. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that valiant 3-1 defeat at Manchester City. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Huddersfield here at Vitality Stadium. But first, let's go back to Saturday and that 3-1 defeat at the Etihad Stadium. Here are the short highlights. Fernandinho captaining Manchester City today. That ball down the left-hand side and Sane snuck in again here. Begovic comes out, good goalkeeping. Bernardo Silva fires it into the back of the net to put Manchester City ahead. And the Cherries hold out for only 15 minutes, I'm afraid. A straight ball over the left-hand side. Begovic initially did well. He was helpless, though, when Bernardo Silva smashed it back towards goal. It's Manchester City 1 for the fill. Well, well, you needed a bit of luck there with the bounce when it come off. The keeper did magnificent to stop, stop the first one. But as he's parried it, he's just parried it into his into his feet and he's, he's smashed it home, Bernardo Silva. Over to the right-hand side, Francis swings one in with his left foot. Callum Wilson with the header! And Callum Wilson finds the equaliser for the Cherries! Just as they did against Arsenal last weekend, they pulled back one of the big guns on the stroke of half-time. Callum Wilson's seventh Premier League goal of the season, and the Etihad is stunned into silence. 1-1. One, one. Well, it was a great build-up. Series of passes across the penalty area, then back again. I think it was Frano's left foot that trailed it in and just missed everybody out except Callum, who got a full head on it. I think the keeper got a touch, but there was too much power in the header. To the second half, but here's Sterling again. He's got support from Danilo on the outside. Danilo's no shot, beaten by Begovic, and then eventually turned in. Raheem Sterling was denied a moment ago, but not to me on this occasion. He sets a new Premier League record, an element of fortune, but the Cherries once more fall to the skill of Sterling. 2 1 City. Well, we had a good bounce with the previous one, but that one did move around a bit, and took a couple of ricochets before Sterling. He seems to like playing against us so much. Played down the left-hand side, nice link-up. Sane drives it across, and it is 3-1, and that probably is the game over. And it's Ilkay Gundogan who scores Manchester City's third there, as the Cherries failed to clear the corner convincingly. And the Etihad rises as City head for their eighth home win of the season out of eight. Well, we, we've tried the best we can to stem the tide, but City just kept coming and coming and coming, and we've got to 80 minutes. We've been in the game at 2-1 for most of the game, but 3-1 will be a tall order now to get back in 10 minutes. Well, there we go. A goal from Callum Wilson wasn't enough on the day for the Cherries. Extended highlights are available for free on AFCB TV. Chris, it was a, a tough game as expected, but 3-1 is, is nothing to be ashamed of, is it? It's not. Uh, you know, you look at, again, some big decisions that could have gone against Bournemouth, uh, uh, could have gone with Bournemouth, I should say, um, which could have changed the game. But, I mean, ultimately, it was a bit like the United and Arsenal games in that there were excellent parts of the performance. Um, you know, the game was alive till the, what was it, the 79th minute when City scored their third. Yes, Bournemouth, you know, they, they didn't actually have many shots, uh, but they had some, some good moments. Um, certainly gave City one or two things to think about and, and deserve their equaliser on the stroke of half time for sure um, and exactly the same way it panned out against Arsenal of course when they went behind pegged them back literally on half time you were hoping they would come out in the second half and uh, and start with a bit between the teeth and they did actually they came out and had a you know Joshua King floating one over the bat that Charlie Daniels couldn't quite get on the end of early in the half but of course then City you know and Pep wasn't very happy he was hopping around by the way in the uh, the technical area in the early stage of that second half but then City just got their got their foothold back in the game um, yeah, the quality they had Leroy Sane was you know played out of his skin he was absolutely fantastic Simon Francis I felt really sorry for him he did so much running uh, up and down you know trying to keep trying to keep track of him Cherries went with three at the back which you know was was Eddie's way of of trying to contain them um, it worked to a certain extent I think they'll be pretty happy with how the game plan was sort of panned out because Asmir had a couple of saves to make um, City had a lot of the ball as we said they would do um, but ultimately yeah again it was it was relatively small margins there was there was more between the sides than there was in the Man United and Arsenal games, but then City are top of the league and have been flying. Uh, they're eight out of eight at home, so all of those things were to be expected. But all in all, I think if, you, if they were going to lose the game, um, they certainly came out with a lot of credit. And that was the, we bumped into some fans 
uh, on the uh, on the M6 on the way home at service stations, and that was the the general feeling was you know pride and credit in defeat really. And one positive is another goal for Callum Wilson as well. Yeah, good to see him back scoring. Had a couple of games without a goal, of course, but had a great header by the way as well. A really you know nice little dink in from from Frano and. Callum Wilson had to generate a lot of the power himself on that header. Um, so to be able to do so, it was a really good header. There were lots of defenders around as well. So, yeah, great for him, scoring different types of goals as well. Good for him to be, uh, you know, still catching the eye after his England uh, exploits. Um, I just saw him this morning actually and asked him if he'd ever been to Kosovo, uh, who England, of course, he got in their group, but he hasn't. So uh, he might be hoping to be in that squad by the time that comes around in a year's time. But uh, yeah, all in all, good to have Callum back on the goal trail. Um, Joshua King, you know, caused them one or two problems again. Um, David Brooks, of course, was left out, which is a, an interesting selection choice with what's coming up this week. Um, but yeah, all in all, you know, good for Callum certainly to be, to be back on the goal trail, and you know he's right up there in the uh, the table of goal scorers at the moment. And of course, he could have had another one. I think Joshua King put a lovely ball into the box for him, and he couldn't quite connect with it, could he? There was a yeah, that's the thing. He had a couple of half chances where actually, if you were being ruthless, you would say someone in the form he's been in, in an England shirt, um, you know, an England international probably should be taking one of those. There was a, a particularly good one close in at the near post where he just missed kicked it um, and he got in front of his defender. So yeah, you're right to say that I think he could have had at least one more. Um, he, he probably, you know, he probably would be thinking he could have had a hat trick um, if, if one of those chances had come off cleanly. Um, but he got one. I think he, I think he probably was kicking himself that he didn't have more. And it's worth mentioning Tyro Minks as well. He, he put in an excellent performance, didn't he? I so put, yeah, team. yeah, absolutely. I, myself and Willow both agree. We thought he was the best Bournemouth player, to be honest with you. And for a guy who's not been, not even in the team, but he hasn't been in the 18 for a lot of the uh, games in recent weeks as well, um, having come back sort of playing under 21s here and there to get some minutes. But he, he stepped in really well on the left of the back three. I think it's a position that suits him pretty well. Um, <clears throat> he's got his height, obviously. He's very quick. Um, he dealt with the, the, the threat that was coming at him. It, it, he couldn't be blamed if it, it was a big game to come into and he was you know, caught a bit short of sharpness. But to his credit, he was absolutely ready to go. Big call by Eddie to throw him in you know, from the cold, really. Um, but he fitted the way that Bournemouth wanted to play system-wise with the personnel they had available. So th the question is now, he, he tends to play in a back three. That, that opens up that third sort of central defensive position for him. Um, will he dislodge Steve Cook or, or Nathan Ake in a, in a four as a centre-half? I'm not sure he will at the moment. So for tomorrow night, it'll be interesting to see how Eddie goes. If, if he, you know, Huddersfield do play a three at the back. So if Eddie opted to go three at the back, then you can see Tyrone staying in. It would be a bit harsh for me if he, if he wasn't in the team tomorrow night. But I think whichever shape Eddie goes with will define whether Tyrone's in the team or not. And of course, we did have that change of formation. How did you feel it <clears> went on the weekend? Yeah, I mean, it looked all right. Yeah, it looks OK. I mean, there was a lot of work. Charlie Daniels and Simon Francis on the on the outer edges of that sort of midfield four, if you like, or a reluctance to call them wing backs because uh, they were doing more back than wing. Let's put it that way. But they had um, they had it all on with with Sane and with, uh, with Sterling. Um, yeah, fundamentally the formation yeah you, you can say it worked out okay but they lost the game um, there was a lot of space Gundogan had a great game in midfield Bernardo Silva for them was finding a lot of space and again we talk about people coming in and, and having to sort of get up to speed Andrew Sermon's hardly hardly featured much recently and he all of a sudden found himself starting because um, Dan Gosling as, as we thought he might do didn't make it um, so yeah Lewis Cook and, and Sermon had a tough day in, in central midfield for sure Jefferson's back tomorrow night, of course. Um, it seems unlikely that Dan Gosling will be fit, so one of Lewis Cook or Sermon will, uh, will have another chance. And it seems this season against the big teams we saw against Manchester United, Arsenal, now Manchester City, the gap isn't quite as big as it has been previous years, has it? That was the closest Bournemouth have come to City, definitely. Um, I think, you know, that we talked about the previous results up there that have been a couple of, uh, a couple of horror shows, a 5-1 and a couple of 4-0s. Uh, this was the closest. But again, like last season, City actually scored their third goal in exactly the same minute, 79, as they did last season. When, so the game was alive for a long time. Um, but yeah, I think in the past it has been a bit of a possibly slightly damaged limitation, if you like, and you know, trying to come away without getting a, an absolute walloping. Whereas this time it was, you know, they stretched them. And I've got to mention the Tyrone Mings penalty shout, by the way, at 2-1. Um, I have to say at the time, they were, they were head on to us, basically. So they were facing us. So we didn't quite get as good a view of it as the TV cameras later showed. So we didn't realise quite how good a penalty shout that was. But I mean, that has to be a penalty. Um, I've, I've been, I feel like I'm getting at referees at the minute. I've said this before. I, I wasn't very complimentary of Craig Pawson last week in the, in the Arsenal game. But the referee, Stuart Atwell, could not have been in a better position. Um, 
anywhere else on the pitch, that's a free kick. I, I, I would love to speak to Stuart Atwell and say, you've seen it, tell us why you haven't given it. Two hands in the back, a clear push, um, didn't realise it at the time, but absolutely that should be a penalty. And if it goes in, then it's a completely different game, 2-2 two, two, and yeah. anything can happen. 2-2 two, two at that point, and you know, Cherry's buoyed by that. City fans, as they saw when Bournemouth you know, pegged them back to 1-1, City fans were, it's almost like they were offended by someone scoring against them. The, the fans went silent, the City went off the boil for a few minutes. So if Bournemouth get back to 2-2 at that stage, um, yeah, things could be massively different. A bit like David Brooks' goal here against Arsenal. If that's allowed, it could be a different game. So ifs and buts and maybes, but I think that was a... So in the last two games, Bournemouth have had two big decisions that you know, I would feel, I would say, could potentially have cost them. Well, next up for the Cherries is tomorrow's game against Huddersfield here at Vitality Stadium. It was quite an afternoon last year, so let's take a look at the highlights now. So referee Probert has waved Haddish and I down the field, of course. He can't come back on. He's had treatment, so there's only 10 Huddersfield players on the field to defend this corner, which is going to be taken by Jordan Knight. In it comes. The head's go up, and it's Callum Wilson, who's on the end of it. On target in the Premier League for the first time since January. The excitement about Callum Wilson's return, quite right. He's back on the score sheet and Bournemouth, despite being second best in the first 26 minutes, lead against Huddersfield. Lots of runs made to confuse the linesman, but Callum Wilson's in, he's made it too! Well, Huddersfield absolute statues in blue and white stripes. Bournemouth players are running left, right and centre to confuse the defenders, and they were completely bewildered. Wilson stole in, fired it into the bottom right corner, and the Cherries within four minutes have surged too clear. Cherry sweeping forward here. Daniels down the left side of the penalty area. Callum Wilson deep into the box, running onto it. Sermon tipped over the crossbar. Thirty seconds uh, left. Oh, oh, Francis has gone in with a challenge there. The Cherry's captain is gone. Sent off. Two yellow cards. I think the referee has been alerted by the fourth official there because there was a referee probe that had initially said played on. Pew needs to be careful, Art has pinched it back, Harry Art with a shooting chance here, onto his left foot, Art! Wilson and King link up, and Joshua King with a great first touch, and he's in on goal. Can King make it four onto his right foot, taking his time? Wilson for a hat trick. Yeah. There it is. Cal Wilson, he is back, back, back. Well, what an afternoon that was. A hat-trick from Callum Wilson on the day. Chris, they can take plenty of confidence from that one, can't they? Yeah, did well because I think ultimately it was a scoreline that flattered them on the day because they had Simon Francis sent off uh, relatively early on in the second half or on the stroke of half-time. So um, played a lot of the game with 10 men but still came out 4-0 winners. Um, I think Huddersfield would, would say they were still adapting to the league at that point and the Premier League was still a bit of a shock to them. Um, but of course, the reverse fixture later in the season, Bournemouth went to Huddersfield and, and got whacked. 4-1, um, just... A horrible, horrible day. It was probably the worst performance of, of last season, I think. Um, so, yeah, two polar opposite games last season. Um, Huddersfield, you know, this season they've been a bit sticky to start with. They won a couple. They obviously had a man sent off on Saturday and, and lost at home to Brighton. So, uh, it sort of checked a bit of their momentum. But they had had a couple of wins. They've only won two games all season in all competitions. So, um, to, to have sort of started to get up and running uh, and then to 
have a man sent off. I would say it was a, a bit of a harsh red card as well. It was it was a little bit high, but I know David Wagner, the manager, wasn't very happy about it. So for Steve Mounier, who which will rule him out tomorrow night, and he's you know a big physical presence. So uh, they have got a, a similar player in De Poitre who could come in. So from that point of view, it might not inconvenience them too much. Um, but in terms of them, they're having the sort of the, the sticky second season, if you like. Finished exactly the same as Bournemouth in their first season, 16th in the table, um, albeit Bournemouth had eight more points, actually, interestingly. Um, but yeah, just at the moment, they're, they're having to find some answers because people have found them out a little bit. Brilliant achievement for them to stay up in the first place. You know, that's all you need in the first season is to stay in the league. Um, but at the moment, they haven't had the first few months of this season that they would like. Um, but saying that, they won the last away game um, at Wolves, which is a great win. So uh, they'll be coming here on the road, certainly with a bit of confidence. And one thing to bear in mind as well, they might be down the bottom of the table. They've only lost one in their last four. So that's something that they can take confidence coming into the game. Yeah, and as I say, they play a three at the back. They've got a, they're a big side as well, a big physical side. Um, but they do play some nice football. Aaron Moy in central midfield. I heard someone say last week they he potentially is the, the best central midfielder outside the big clubs, which, you know, with the greatest respect to the Bournemouth players, with outside Bournemouth as well. Um, but he's a, he's, a, he's a great player. Aaron Moyes uh, really makes them tick. Uh, I think I'm right in saying he missed one of the, the two games against Bournemouth last season. But um, he's, yeah, he's a real, um, a real playmaker, can make things happen for them. So if he's on, if he's on, the, uh, on the money tomorrow, then he'll be a problem for Bournemouth for sure. But yeah, they, they'll come with a bit of confidence. The, the goals for them are, have not been easy to come by. I think I'm right in saying no striker has scored for them so far this season. Um, most of their goals have come from defenders. There's Big Zanka, the Danish centre-half, scored on Saturday. Um, so a lot of their goals, I think their top scorer has got two. Um, which tells you all you need to know. And they've only scored two, I think, in one Premier League game this season, and that was the win away at Wolves. So, yeah, they're, they're a bit light on goals, um, but from that point of view, they, still, they do have threats. And Aaron Moy, I would say, is the one that uh, the Bournemouth... He's easily recognisable with, uh, with his bald head. He's the one that Bournemouth fans should watch out for. And from Bournemouth's point of view, it does look like Dan Gosling's going to miss the game, but it'll be great to have Jefferson Lerma back, won't it? Yeah, and as we, we said on Friday, you know, it possibly wasn't a bad game to miss Jefferson for, with the greatest respect again to him. I don't know how much he could have impacted the game in terms of stopping City's threats, because, uh, you know, a lot of them came down the wide areas. Um, but it, great to have him back. Um, obviously, he'll be fit and firing and ready to go. Two big home games coming up now over the course of the next few days. Um, so, yeah, he'll be back in central midfield, whether it's Lewis Cook or Sermon that goes with him. If, if I was a betting man, I would think it would be Lewis Cook. Um, but of course, he got left out in the, the previous home game for, for Dan Gosling, who now is not available. So, yeah, choices in midfield, choices at the back in terms of which formation they go with, as we were saying earlier, with, with Tyrone Mings as a, a third centre-half, or do they go back to the flat four? Um, and obviously, David Brooks, I would expect to, to come back in as well. I don't think it'd be too long before we see Junior Stanislas from the start as well. Um, he's been working his way back to fitness. Ryan Fraser's obviously had a tough run of games as well. So um, I, I wouldn't be wholly surprised to see Junior start tomorrow night as well. And how important is tomorrow night's game for the Cherries? I mean, they've lost four in a row, even though the, the performances haven't necessarily been that bad. It doesn't bode well on paper, does it? I think it's important because, you know, you, you just can't get onto a, a trot where um, you're not getting any points at all. We mentioned before about the significance of not getting anything at Newcastle. Um, I think the one thing, Eddie, there, there were two points really that Eddie was keen to make today ahead of the game, which was um, expectations have to remain in check because everyone would expect Bournemouth to win tomorrow night because of the respective starts to the season. Um, and I think that the bookies, you know, will have it right. They'll have Bournemouth as favourites, and that is right. Um, the other thing he was, he wanted the crowd to play a huge part. Um, that was the, the message he was putting out, was that we're really going to need the crowd on side. You know, if things don't go well early on, you know, taking a while to break through, um, stay with the team. Um, that's the, the message he was keen to put out. So, But you're right in terms of having four successive defeats. You need to check that momentum at some point and, and swing things in the opposite direction. The, the counter, I guess, to that is that, as you say, they have been playing well. It's not as if they've had four defeats and have played abysmally and, and are scratching around for rhythm and momentum they've got momentum from four defeats which sounds stupid um, but they have um, Liverpool to come on Saturday and then Wolves and Brighton to actually if you almost forget the last four games and look at the next four coming up Huddersfield Wolves and Brighton with Liverpool in the middle you, you need some momentum from that you need some positivity these are games now that they've got to find some points from um, particularly with a little run of away games coming up after Christmas as well so yeah the expectation will be on Bournemouth um, I think they'll win. I do think they'll get back to winning ways. Um, and hopefully, yeah, it sort of starts things back in the right direction again. Well, it's certainly going to be a very exciting game. That's all we've got time for today. We'll be back on Friday to preview the game here against Liverpool on Saturday. Thanks for joining us.